Looking at soccer odds, with less than half a dollar as a minimum bet, Patrick Oped and his friends attempt to identify a sure win. It's fun, and at the same time it's really challenging, like I said. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, but in most cases you lose. That's the most unfortunate part about it. Gambling is big in Uganda, and several shops have been sprawling up in major towns across the country. This business attracts all kinds of clients, from the trader to the corporate person to a person who is working on the street. It's an open business. Online betting is now a big trend too, and betting companies say the number of people involved online has more than doubled. Look at the statistics of Toha phones in this country and how many people are using internet and how many people are using mobile money because you have to have mobile money to be part of that whole circle. So it is very easy to have people access phones, get on a betting platform. This is one of the gambling epicenters in the capital with an array of betting shops. But with increased internet penetration, more people now prefer betting online to walking into the shops. And this is proving to be a bigger challenge for authorities. While the National Lottery Board says revenue collected has increased from about 300,000 US dollars 10 years ago to close to 10 million dollars in 2016, the regulators are keen on controlling these betting platforms. This new law is meant to regulate the betting and the gaming, streamline the activities, but importantly protect the innocent, the children and the families because betting and gaming is very very addictive and if you don't understand what is going on you can lose everything you have uganda says implementation of the policy has seen the number of betting and gaming companies reduced from 110 to less than 40 in 10 years michael baleke cgtn kampala uganda